In my last video, we talked about bits, what that is, and the difference between 8-bit and 10-bit. Today's video is the next video on Canon M6 Mark II's color sampling method. Now, I used the Canon M6 Mark II as an example here, but it's not just the M6 Mark II that has 420 as a coloring sampling method. For a long time, the 420 color sampling method has been the normal for a lot of camera brands. Not until recent releases like the R5, R6 and the A7S III does consumer cameras have 422 as a color sampling method internally in the camera. But what does 420 422 and 444 mean. If you don't know, stick around till the end of the video and you might understand your camera a little bit better. Coming up. Hi, my name is Roger and on this channel we talk about cameras, tech gear and videography. And I would appreciate the early thumbs up because, let's be honest, that would help this channel grow on YouTube. First, I just have to say, my intention with these kind of explanation videos is to simplify things and maybe make it easy for people to understand the terms used when talking about cameras and how the camera technically work. If you're new to cameras, this might seem difficult to understand and I just want to explain things so that everyone has a chance to be part of this conversation and to understand what everybody else is talking about when new cameras are hitting the market. Because technical terms is often the first thing that we hear about. It's important to me that everyone that watch my videos has a chance to follow along. That's why I might talk a little bit slower in my YouTube videos than others normally do here on YouTube. Maybe this is just the way I talk. English isn't my first language after all. The reason I mention this is that I've, I've gotten some comments saying that I talk too slow in my videos, so if you share this opinion, just increase the playback speed of the video and you'll be good to go. But back to the topic of this video. One pixel produces or captures one single color or shade of color at one specific time. If each single pixel on the sensor captures one specific shade of color, we would get the color sampling method that's called 444. To explain the numbers in the color sampling methods, we need to take a look at four of the pixels on the sensor side by side in a row, and one second row of four pixels underneath the first row. This gives us a total of eight pixels. The first four indicates luma, and luma is the brightness of an image. The brightness of an image. As I'm editing this, I see that I need to clarify one thing. The first four in the subsampling methods, that indicates the four pixels that's being used. In the rest of the video, I say that it indicates Luma because Luma is captured in all four pixels in every sampling method. But just remember that the first four in 444, 422 and 420, that indicates the amount of horizontal sampling references. Okay, back to the video. No, wait, subscribe if you haven't already. And the first number four is constant in the three coloring sampling methods. You have 444, 422 and 420. This means that your camera is capturing the luminance or brightness of the footage in all four pixels in both rows in all the color sampling methods. 
The reason luminance or brightness is captured by every single pixel in every coloring sampling method is that the human eye is much more sensitive to luminance or brightness than it is to color. We notice changes of luminance or lack of luminance much easier than we notice changes or lack of color. So luminance is therefore captured in every single pixel. The next number indicates colors captured in the first row of pixels and the second number indicates colors captured in the second row of pixels. And as we know from our video about bits, there are three colors needed to make a complete color palette. And that is red, green and blue. So if we take the coloring sampling method 444, the first number indicates, like we said, that Luma is captured in every single pixel in both rows. The second number indicates that the red, green and blue is captured in all pixels in the first row. And the third four indicates that red, green and blue is captured in every single pixel in the second row. This means that 444, there is no compression in 444. Nothing is being compressed as everything is being captured in every pixel. So a color sampling method of 444 is also known as raw footage. And this is mostly found in high-end cinema cameras. And with all this color information in every single pixel, this will make the file size huge and really demanding on your computer to work with. In order to cut down the file sizes, most cameras doesn't capture all the color information in every pixel. And that's when the two other color sampling methods are being used. 422 that we find in newer cameras like the R5, R6 and the A7S III that tells us, like we said earlier, that Luma is captured in every single pixel. The second number tells us that red, green and blue is only captured in two of the four pixels in the top row. And then they are copied over to the ones beside them. The same is for the last number that is the second row. Two says that red, green and blue is captured in only two of the pixels and then copied over to the ones beside them. Now the color is captured in the opposite pixels from the top row to spread the color information more evenly. By doing this, copying the information, the camera reduced the file size due to lesser information. This color capturing method only retains 50% of the original amounts of colors. But the color sampling method that's been more common in consumer lever cameras up until now is the color sampling method of 420. Like in the previous two sampling methods, the 4 tells us that luma or brightness is captured in every pixel in both rows. The 2 tells us that color is captured in two of the four pixels in the first row and then copied over to the ones next to them. But here, the zero tells us that nothing of the color is captured in any of the pixels in the bottom row. Instead, the pixels in the bottom row copies the information from the top row, making one large pixel out of the four pixels. This way, only 25% of the color is being captured and the file size will be much smaller than in a 422 and a 444. But now you might think that this copying of colors would result in pixelated images with blocky pixels with the same color. Remember, the luma or brightness is captured in every single pixel. So even if the colors is copied, the shade of the color will be different in every pixel. So we barely notice the difference between 422 and 420. So why would we want the higher color sampling method if we barely notice the difference? If you plan on doing heavy color grading, the more color gathered, the better the end result will be. So 
with the newer cameras like the R5, R6 and the A7S III, you now can record 422 internally in the camera. But even with 420 recording, you can make great looking footage as long as you know good lighting and good composition. Next week's video is going to be about all I and IPB, which is another compression method to shrink file size. If everything goes as planned, in the next video we might get a guest appearance from a professional in the film industry that's worked with film for many years. And it will be really interesting to hear his opinion on file compression, so I do hope we get to do that, but nothing is guaranteed. This video has been about color sampling, or color subsampling, or chroma subsampling, all the same thing. Like we say here in Norway, Chatban har mange navn. I do hope you got something out of this video. If you did, give me a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos from me. Leave a comment in the comment section down below. It's always nice to talk to you guys down there. And yeah, maybe I will see you in another video. Bye.